Hello everybody. Welcome. My name is Jennifer Gormley and I am a teaching artist for Think360 Arts. I work with printmaking, installations, and a whole range of art making experiences. So today our workshop or project is called Felted Creatures but there are many other names for this process and as you develop your own you could rename it to be whatever you think suits whatever it is that you've made. At any time during this uh, video presentation, you can pause it and go ahead and do the activity that I explained and then resume the video so that you can work with me. Or you can just watch the whole entire thing and then get started on your own. However it works best for you is fine with me. But first, we're going to, I'm going to show you some examples of pieces that I've made. We will go over materials that you probably would need, and then I'll show you step by step how to do the process. So, um, like I said, these are called felted creatures, and uh, I just use felt from uh, Michael's, or it's also available at Joann's. Um, that's the ideal, but we're also going to talk about different options that you could do just around the house. Uh, and the inside, we are actually going to use plastic grocery sacks whoops, to stuff these little creatures. So thinking about how to be resourceful with just the things that you have around the house. I don't have names for all these guys, but they all have their own unique personality. So, and I kind of like these flappy ears. So that's something to think about when you're working on your design is these appendages, they're kind of too small to stitch two layers together and stuff. So I just call them flaps. So as you're, we're about to work on our drawing in a couple minutes. And when you do your drawing, you want to think about, do you want to have flaps or do you want to have stuffed legs and arms and tails and horns and things like that. I don't know if this is a cat or a dog or something in between, but it's a fun thing. There's a little snake and it has a pocket here. I guess I was thinking about Tooth Fairy days. I don't know. Um, and then I left just a little bit of the thread hanging on the tail just for some fun little details. Um, so I'm going to angle the screen in just a minute so you can see a little better as I start to work. But first, let's talk about materials. Uh, you'll definitely need a piece of paper, maybe two pieces actually, to draw on, to draw your idea on. Um, you'll need a thread and sewing needle. And here's like a little baby sewing kit I found at King Supers for just like, I don't know, maybe $2. Um, ideally, if you had access to embroidery th thread, this would work best because then we could really see those nice stitch lines. But if this is all you have, then that's fine. Your project is going to come out great. Um, it's helpful to have a Sharpie marker or some sort of marker and a pair of scissors that can cut through paper as well as materials. In terms of the material that you want to use, uh, all my examples were made from, like I said, felt that comes in 9 by 12 sheets from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or Joann's, and they're about 40 cents a piece, but uh, you may not have access to that right now. Um, so actually I found some old bed sheets that I had gotten from the thrift store to make a tablecloth. Um, you could also use an old t-shirt that you don't wear anymore, or maybe there's uh, some cut off blue jeans and you still have the fabric that you cut off. Although denim would be a little thick to sew through, but you never know till you try. Um, maybe there's some old kitchen towels that are kind of ragged and need to be repurposed. Make sure you ask first before you just start grabbing things from the house and cutting them up and using them. Because we want to make sure we're respectful of other people that we're with. Um, let's see, what else do you need? If you have any pins, like small pins, like little sewing pin, this is helpful to pin your layers of fabric or felt together. If you don't have pins, you can just use scotch tape. That will work in a pinch. Um, yeah, so I think that's most of the materials. I'm sure I'll mention something if it comes up. 
Uh, oh, one extra thing. If you have anything around like buttons or any other little fun bedazzler things you could attach to it, um, even uh, those fuzzy pipe cleaners, those could be fun for ears or some sort of wiggly element. So as you start to watch the video and think about what you could use for your project, some ideas might become, you know, might you might spark your imagination and that's totally fine. I love that. Uh, so let's angle the screen down. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a design. So when you make your design, I recommend that you just kind of make one big organic shape first with no real intention. And then you can kind of look at this shape and think, wow, well maybe this part, this part needs some teeth on it. Rawr. Yup. Something so that they can eat their victim. Maybe this part has like a big ear so that they can hear who's coming. Maybe here we have a big eyeball, kind of like that. But what if it's like, like a, a snake or a cat or that kind of eyeball? So it's this big, long, like alien eyeball. They probably need some sort of nostril or way to breathe or smell things. Tiny little nostril there. Um, and maybe this creature only has a tail and then maybe just like a little flap for the hand and that's about it. Um, maybe a little leg so they can kind of scoot around. Right, so here's my fun little creature guy thing just, you know, out of imagination. A lot of my creatures tend to look alike. Um, kind of needs like a little hat. Okay, so that is the basic one-two of a design. This is just one design. You can make yours whatever you want. Um, and so, in fact, I had done another design earlier that we're going to work with today, and that's this guy. So you can see that they're distant cousins, totally related. In fact, they could have like a little powwow. Um, anyway, so after you draw your first design, take another piece of paper and lay it on top and then tape this to the window so that you can see through your first drawing and then go ahead and make another copy so that you have two copies of the same drawing like this. So I have a little um, desktop printer that has a copier function, so I just made a Xerox. If you don't have that at home, you can just tape a blank piece of paper on top, tape it to the window, trace around it, and then that way, boom, you have two copies. So one copy, we're going to go ahead and cut out just the body. And at first you're thinking, oh no, you're cutting off the legs. Yes, I'm cutting off the legs because all I want on this first piece is just the basic general outline. And, you know, I'm trying to hurry and cut this out for the demo, but also this, you know, this is called a pattern, and my pattern doesn't have to be 100% perfect. I can just basically get the gist of it, and then when I go to cut out my fabric, then I can be a little more time consuming and precise with all the different curves and everything like that. So it's easiest if you have just a simple body shape, it would be best. Um, and then you're going to take that and you're going to take your fabric. So we need two pieces of fabric. We need one for the front of the creature and another piece for the back side. So like on this cat, I have pink on the front and then some sort of black textured fabric on the back. So for this demo, we're just going to use this pink bed sheet for both sides, and I folded them together so that I'm kind of being efficient with my cutting and all that. So I'm going to lay it down, and then whenever I find my pins, I'm going to just put in a few pins. doesn't have to be a whole bunch, just a couple. And just try not to stab your finger and draw blood because that would slow down the progress of everything, right? You'd have to stop and get a Band-Aid and make sure you didn't have any blood on the fabric, unless maybe you're 
cutting out a dragon or something, and then the blood might be coming come in handy. So um, now I'm going to cut my fabric into a more usable piece like this, and then just basically cut around your shape. And like I said, this is when you can get a little bit more slow and precise. Make sure you do a good job. It's okay if your fabric ends up being a little bigger. In fact, a lot of times I end up doing that and cutting my actual pieces out a little bit bigger. Because that gives me a little bit more wiggle room, right? It's hard to work with things when they're really, really small. So, basically, we would cut this out. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this because I came up with an idea while I was talking and I'll show you in just one second. If your fabric is thick this might take longer and if it's super thick I would not recommend cutting out both layers at the same time but this kind of fabric, this bed sheet fabric is nice and thin so that was pretty easy. Um, now with your second uh, drawing or your copy this is the time when we're going to start talking about how to embed our little elements or flaps into the main character. So if I just went and cut right on that line to cut out like these spiky thingies, it would be really hard to attach all these spiky thingies to the fabric when I'm sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and modify my drawing and build in this extra flap or margin on the inside of all my little elements that are sticking out from the edge of my creature. Right, so I kind of just add this little enlargement. These guys don't need it because of how they're designed, but anything that's designed to come off the edge, just appear out of nowhere, we need to build in this little extra margin so that we can attach them to our piece when we uh, make it. Um, so then you just basically, same thing we just did, go ahead and cut this out and include that extra margin that we just built in because we're going to need that for when we are sewing everything together. Right? So I have my, my spiky hair thing and the little tail, but then I have this extra margin built in. So Fast forwarding ahead, I have all my little pieces already cut out of a different fabric. It's like a polka dot fabric. So I'm going to use that to start building this guy together. Um, and then here he is cut out with some purple, I don't know, zigzag fabric. So the next step, after you cut out all your pieces and keep the little template on there for now, the next step will be to unpin your pattern from your fabric. And since I have two copies, I'm going to just set that aside so I don't get confused. I'll set that aside for now. So the next step would be to pin on any of the elements that you want on the front side. If we waited until we stitched everything together to pin on these elements, then it would be really hard to stuff our creature uh, because they would be sewing all the way through the front back side. So here is the creature's eyeball. I'm going to go ahead and pin that on to just one layer. So I skipped that. So you want to separate your layers, save the back side over here where you don't forget it, and then we have the eyeball. Right, so this eyeball is going to be polka dotted eyeball. And my idea, since this is our original drawing of the eyeball, my idea is that I'm actually going to go in with Sharpie marker after I'm all done sewing and make that kind of eyeball in there with the Sharpie marker. So not every single element has to be cut out and stitched on. For example, this ear, the little ear of the guy right here, and his nostril. These two elements are way too small to cut out a piece of fabric and try to stitch it on. So uh, you could cut out a fabric and glue it on with just some Elmer's glue. Or you could just draw it on with Sharpie marker after your piece is made. And that's my plan there. But first I got to attach this eyeball. Um, so this is when we would get out your sewing kit that I showed earlier. 
and uh, there's a needle in there and there's some thread. So this thread is a little bit thin so I actually threaded two pieces together and then doubled them and tied a knot in the end. So this kind of I know it's still very small to see in the video format, but this kind of gives me a couple extra layers of thread to work with. So then I'm going to start from the back side, and this needle is very dull. It's designed for, for crafting. Um, so if you also have a dull needle, sometimes you can put the back side of the needle down on a table to help push it through. So we start from the back side, and then we make sure that knot stays back there. Uh, without pulling the knot through the fabric and then we're going to go from the front side and kind of push it through like that and this is my favorite part about making art is this slow meditative thing where we just get to play with the materials everything else kind of falls away and we just get to hang out and focus on playing basically and here we're playing with color and thread and basically line and shape as well so sometimes the thread gets a little knotted up and I just never pull on it I just gently gently um, try to just separate it I guess so uh, make sure as you're sewing see how at this point it, the thread is coming from the back side I don't want to make a mistake and have it hanging out on the back side and go back through the front because then it will kind of do this thing where the thread goes around and we don't want that to happen. So I always have to kind of focus and keep track of where the thread's coming out from and it needs to go back in from that side for the next stitch. Another thing we want to be careful of is like I said before not stabbing our fingers and just like going slow enough that the thread just kind of falls into place okay so I'm gonna set this aside you get the idea of that after all your elements are stitched onto the front um, then the next step would be to pin two layers your two layers together so on this piece what I have is I have the elements pinned to the guy Right, there's the eyeballs, and here's the teeth, and here's the back side. I call this one Captain Cavity. Um, so after I stitch these on, then I'm going to pin the two layers together and insert the flaps. So um, over here we have, yes, these two. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to take this one apart real quick. So what we're going to do is pin the top and the bottom together like so and then at this point we're also going to find the mohawk or whatever we're going to call this is spiky hair with the rat tail and for this one because my fabric is so thin I went ahead and cut two layers and I'm going to sew it with two layers uh, just like that so I'm going to lay this remember we when we cut it out we have this extra margin or border and that's getting embedded a little bit like quarter inch half inch into the fabric and then the spiky spikes are poking out so we'll pin this together these pins are really helpful you can use extra sewing needles if you have it if you don't have any pins um, you could try tape like I suggested earlier although that might be challenging um, you could also try paper clips. Paper clips really work well in a pinch. So here is how it looks with the spiky hair things pinned in and the little tail. I kind of like how they separate, like little, two little snake tongues or something. Um, and then what else do we have? We have the mouth piece. Definitely going to need that for eating and terrorizing other uh, animals Rawr. so at this point you can decide how much you want them to stick out but make sure that some is embedded in there so that when you go to stitch it together that your teeth don't fall out it's pretty simple kinda like brushing but different okay so one little pin for there 
and then, uh, like I said, I'm going to attach um, the ear and the nose. I'm just going to draw those on. So at this point, this leg goes like this. Oh, but this leg I should have stitched onto the front side when I did the eyeball. So that's the thing about this project. you got to remember which step goes where. So um, when you're working on your project, make sure that you attached all the top layer elements. Make sure you stitch them on to the top layer before you start pinning everything together. I guess I was just really excited and getting ahead of myself. But what I'm going to do right now is set that aside because I want to move on to the next step and show you what's next. So here I have this one. I call this one Eggplant Eddie. I don't know why. Probably because it's purple. Um, so what I have already done here is I have sewn on the front pieces and then I pinned the two layers together and I pinned in the little flaps for the legs and then these big long like Snoopy dog ears and then I had pinned everything together like that and then I started sewing from the inside so the inside is where we want to hide our knot and then just a quick easy like in and out stitch all the way around and then I stopped at this point because now we're going to stuff this creature with um, I'm using the produce plastic grocery sacks so they're really nice and thin I, I washed them so there's no you know broccoli or anything any suspicious smelling vegetable remnants or anything like that so it's really up to you how much you want this to be stuffed, how fluffy you want it. But keep in mind that you still have to stitch it shut, so it can't be too squishy. I actually feel like Eggplant Eddie can only hold two bags, and now his belly's full. So I think that looks like a good amount, and now I'm going to pick up my needle and resume stitching it together. So as you're stitching, uh, keep in mind if you pull the thread too much it'll start to pucker the fabric so try not to do that unless that's intentional also if you have a little tail from your needle I like to pinch my the thread between my two fingers so I don't end up unthreading the needle or pulling that tail out from the needle because then you have to stop and rethread the needle and all that takes more time so this needle is much sharper than the other one I was working with. You can see how fast this part goes. And then when you're close to the end, then you can kind of decide where you want your stitch to begin and end. I'm going to have it come out here. And I'm actually going to have it meet up with that guy. And then just loosely peel back the extra margin, tie it in a knot real quick, and then I like to use the needle to shimmy that knot down all the way to the base of all that stuff. Usually this takes me a while, uh, and I'm rushing for the video, but hopefully you get the idea. Then at the end I will trim the thread, and then that will be my little eggplant eddy creature um, if if these are going to be around babies or very small children, uh, you want to make sure that any attachments like the buttons are very, very well sewn on or attached so that they don't get loose and they end, they end up choking on them or anything like that. So that is the process of these stitched felted creatures or whatever your imagination turns them into. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Jennifer Gormley. If you want to have me come to your classroom, just contact Think360Arts, and we'll see you soon. Have fun, guys. Thanks.